Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. I bid to Sir Azhan and all my friends. So today, our group will present our research finding. Our research is based on SDG 11 and our research focus on public transportation. The title of our research is What are the factors that affecting the student's choice of transport? So, our group member consists of me, Muhammad Azrohani Behemi as the group leader, Muhammad Zulmiftah bin Zakaria, Nur Ilani binti Muhammad Suhaimin, Nur Elia Atira binti Hashim, and Jenny Shu Siu Hong. In this presentation, we will present you 11 elements of our research report, which will be presented by five presenters who will take turn in presenting based on their expertise. Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So I'm Zumifta and I'm going to present on the parts of introduction of our research report. So our research report are based on the Sustainable Development Goals number 11, which is make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. A report by United Nations by 2050, two thirds of all humanity, which is 6.5 billion people will be living in urban. Sustainable development cannot be achieved without significantly transform the way we build our cities. Uh, the rapid growth of cities, which is a result of rising populations and increasing in migrations, has led to a boom in mega cities, especially in developing world. Making cities sustainable means creating a career and business opportunities, safe and affordable housing, and also building resilient societies and economies. It involves investments in public transport, creating green public spaces, and improving urban planning and management in participatory and inclusive ways. And then, these are the percentage based on the United Nations reports. Rapid urbanization has resulted in growing numbers of slum dwellers, inadequate and overburdened infrastructures and services, and also worsening the air pollution in the city itself. The COVID-19 will hit the hardest than more than 1 billion slum dwellers and also the citizen itself worldwide, who suffer from a lack of adequate housing, no water at home, few or no waste management systems, and overcrowded public transports. Access to adequate and reliable plus safe public transport is basic urban needs to sustain the civilization inside. Based on the data, 90% in the next decades will be involving urban expansions in the developing world and also 60% only allocated for open spaces and streets which means the breathable of the city itself are very very low And last but not least, the quote by Simon Van Boy, for those who are lost, they will always be city that feels like home. But then, how can we find it? Hi, I'm Elia. I'm going to present about the problem statement. There are a few common issues when it comes to the aspect of public transportation. The first one is the inequality of access to public transport between students in cities and rural areas. This happens because many infrastructure upgrades are made in cities and in the end will result in the neglected development of rural area. The second problem is the negative effect of using private cars instead of public transport. It is known that high usage of transportation has caused increasing rate of carbon emission every year which is bad for the environment. Last but not least is the high cost of constructing public transport infrastructure. Building a high-tech infrastructure like public transport station significantly can cost the government a fortune. However, this is an investment that comes in a long-term effect that should be considered by the government itself. Hello, my name is Eliani. So I'm going to present about research question. We have three research questions in this report. First, How is the accessibility of public transport differs between urban and rural areas? Second, what are the factors that influence the student choice of transportation between hometown and UTP? Third, in what ways the student can be benefited from the use of public transportation and private vehicles? From the research question, there are two hypotheses that we obtain. First, students from rural areas have limited accessibility to different types of public transport. And the second one, Students from rural area prefer to use bus, while students from city prefer to use train to return to campus. This hypothesis was made based on the bus route in Malaysia that are wider than train routes. So we are going moving on to the fourth element, which is significance of study. The first significance is to sort the contributing factors of the students in choosing the most preferred public transport. In the year of 2020, there are 435,994 students in at higher education in Malaysia. So what these numbers means, in this modern world, everything works on supply and demand basis. If more supply over demands, a lot of resources will be produced in terms of resources such as money, energy, workers, and also the technology. So how this number will contribute in 
building a sustainable city. So as these numbers uh, will play a significant role in the next generations of the citizens of Malaysia. So this group of students will be going to be the potential market for the public transport or any infrastructure that are going to build by the governments or the developers. So if we could identify the most preferred public transport in these potential markets, this data could be used by the developers or the governments to plan and suggest the best infrastructure or the public transport that will suit the city and also the population itself throughout the 50 years or more than 100 years as we could identify the best way of providing them based on their needs. And the second and the third points is the diversity of the data for us and also for the future researcher. So for the data, the diversity of the data itself as the data are representing the area of throughout the Malaysia as the UTP students came from every state in Malaysia. And then it comes to the second point, which is the secondary data. Researchers that also contributed in the SDG 11 will use our data. Next, moving on to literature review. In Malaysia, almost every family possesses at least one private vehicle. So it is not surprising that public transportation is not a famous option when they want to travel. So why public transport is unpopular in Malaysia? In Malaysia, we have three cars manufacturers, which are Proton, Produa and NASA. So, people has better and wider choice when they want to buy cars. Abdul Fattah, Shah and Puan stated that combined with the low interest rate, easy loan approval process and highly subsidized petrol fuel, it has become easier and cheaper to own a car or a motorcycle. However, that's not the only reason why people avoid public transportation. The other reason is infrastructure. The infrastructure of public transportation in Malaysia are not competent enough. For example, some train stations are not directly connected to bus stations via facilities like air-conditioned bridges. Brohi et al. stated that with the poor connectivity, people have to walk across the road to continue their journey even if it is time-consuming, hot and rainy weather, and exposed to safety and security risks. Next, one of the biggest reasons is safety. In Malaysia, robbery, sexual harassment of female passengers and snatch thieves are the major concerns for people to avoid using public transportation. Burhan et al, Brahi et al, Santuri and Baharom agreed that bus drivers sometimes drive recklessly and violate the traffic rules in a bid to meet the schedule. In this situation, we can see that the safety and the life of every passenger are compromised. However, Malaysians also agreed that public transportation reduced emission of greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are the hazardous gases which are emitted from the combustion of fuel. Kwan and Hashim, through their research, found that public transportation produces 95% less carbon monoxide, 45% less carbon dioxide, and 48% less nitrogen dioxide compared to private vehicles. So, hi everyone, I'm Jenny, and I'm going to talk about research design. So, in our research design, we have uh, using two methods, which is qualitative method and quantitative method. For qualitative method is involve the literature review which we gather in the internet information and then for quantitative research method we have used online survey method and for online survey method we have the purpose of gathering data and information from sample of people in our research we have our target group is 40 to 80 utp students and Next, we have conducted the online survey throughout the Google Forms and we have uh, spread the form through the social media platforms such as WhatsApp and Facebook. And then I'm going to talk about data analysis. In our surveys, we have uh, successfully received 80 respondents from UTP and after calculating the surveys, we have got uh, 28 students from rural areas and 52 students from urban areas. And we have concluded the three main points for our survey result. The first is Malaysia mostly depends on public transport when they are taking a long journey, such as when they are going from their hometown, for example, Johor, to UTP in Perak. And next, secondly, we have concluded that bus and grab car or my car are the most common public transport that are available in Malaysia, which we can see that mostly they have both bus and grab car in all their hometown but not for tram, for example, or MRT. And lastly, we have concluded that the factor that were affecting students to choose their public transport is 
according to safety, Thai currency, travel time, comfort, ticket price, and driver. And I'm going to talk about the discussion that we get from our survey result. And the, as you can see, the three main points here. Firstly, if you can remember the research question, we our discussion and answer to the research question. Firstly, the difference between urban areas and rural areas. There are limited transport are provided in rural areas. Secondly, the accessibility of public transport in rural areas, they can't easily access to the public transport such as bus or grab car. For example, some grab cars are unwilling to go into some rural area and next is the frequent of bus coming. For example, in rural area, the, the bus is coming like one hour or two hours or something. But in urban area, the bus is coming for 10 minutes one, one time. And the second one is the factor affecting student choice of transportation, which we have discussed just now, is the safety, which is due to the spread of virus COVID-19. And secondly is time currency, thirdly travel time. And next is the benefit of taking public transport. Uh, after we analyze the survey result, we have concluded these three benefit of taking public transport, which is by the students, which is saving money, reducing traffic jam, and reducing pollution. Next, we move on to the limitation that we face in completing the research. Firstly, Time is limited. As our team of researchers consists of students, it is quite hard to dedicate ourselves fully in the research. However, we have made schedule to make sure the research is done by the deadline. Secondly, due to pandemic happening around the world, we have decided to do online survey. This online method, despite being easier, somehow lack in the quality of the results. We cannot analyze the body language of the respondent and whether they understand or not the question. That is why we also use the article journals as reference to our data. Lastly, the limitation that we face is the difficulty in the research itself. Initially, we are facing the problem of differentiating the student from cities and rural area. In this case, we have solved the problem by referring to the data from Census 2010 since the latest one is not yet available. Okay. In conclusion, uh, there are some several implications that we can get from this research. As we can see, the student for rural area has limited choice to different types of public transportation. This will make them harder to travel and have limitation in choosing transport. Government can help to design public transportation system in the future in Malaysia to make it more efficient and money worthy. Also, the safety and public satisfaction for public transportation can be increased. If this can be achieved, the number of public transportation users and number of people traveling in Malaysia can be increased. This also can help to reduce the number of car users and pollution. Okay, so that's all for us. Don't forget to share this video and give it a thumbs up. Thank you.